I could stay like this Forever following you Just don't get too far And I'll be right where you are Hello everyone, Abby here, Purple Cottage Crafts. Quick disclaimer before I get into the video. Um, as most of you know, I don't have my craft rooms um, remodeled yet, so I'm now moved to, into a little temporary space here in the living room downstairs. Since they're actively working on my room every day, well, pretty much every day, it's pretty noisy out there, and um, uh, there's like some different smells like from the concrete, different things they're doing out there. So Steve said this, go ahead and have, um, set up like a little temporary space here, and that's what I'm doing. So with... Um, me working in the house right now you might hear Bella barking you could be you know sounds of Kaylee moving around down here getting the fridge for lunch or whatever whatever um, just to let you know I'm sorry about those exterior kind of noises you may hear but uh, um, you know it's kind of I'm crafting in the house and so you know life goes on that kind of a thing so just my disclaimer if you hear anything like that so what I wanted to do is not really start a new playlist per se because I'm, I'm already have um, a video or two up, up on slow stitching but what I wanted to do is kind of start like uh, a new series within that slow stitching um, playlist and what I think I'm gonna call it I might change we'll see but what I'm thinking now is um, like slow stitching and a chat and then um, like you know for today's video what I'm gonna work on today is showing you and doing some um, uh, let me grab it out here some uh, slow stitching on these two and a half by two and a half fabric squares that I bought from Joann's. You of course could buy them yourself and cut and you'll cut the fabric down, which is actually what I, I do. But I grabbed this really big stack for not very much money. Um, I thought you know it'd be a lot easier, kind of a little quicker and convenient for me since I don't have my crafting space um, done yet. You could get a pair of you know the the pinking shears. I've had these forever, or you could just do a regular straight edge cut you can distress it whatever you want your edges to look like so what I've done and I've actually did this a couple weeks ago or a little over a week ago maybe I can't remember exactly but what I did is just made some different small stitching um, little samples and I'll hold them up for you here so this one has um, you know some stamping in the background I'm um, if you are going to be using stamping on um, your different slow stitch projects or even your mixed media whatever kind of projects um, my recommendation is to use um, archivers ink or some type of you know stays on permanent ink that just in case you know maybe something gets splashed I mean I, I don't know why or how that would happen but that was kind of my thought process anyway so I just did some different stitching on here and I wanted to say it again I am still very new with this world of slow stitching so um I'm currently teaching myself a few different knots via some fabulous uh, videos on YouTube. And when I get to those, when, when I feel confident enough to um, show you those stitches and stuff, I will, of course, link the um, ladies I watched in the description box below to give 100% credit for that. So here I just did some simple cross you know, stitching there. And then did some, uh, not really a C, but just kind of like a running stitch, I guess you could say. So nothing really super hard. I mean, pretty basic. Just a couple different pieces of fabric and some simple stamping. And then this one here, I wanted to incorporate some um, another textile. So this is just some of the burlap fabric I've had. Again, more stitching. These are um, kind of like this, me practicing the seed stitching there. A little bit of pink sticking out, and I did some stitching on there as well. How many times am I, is Abby going to say the word stitching in this video? <laughs> so sorry, but that's really kind of annoying. I forget the orientation of how I wanted this to go. I don't remember. I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess it doesn't matter. Anyway, so I'm even able to use some cheesecloth in there and do some stitching. And this one here is kind of fun. I use some of the, um, I'll show it to you actually. I, I think this is Mark Elections, but it's just twine with like some gold metallic running through it. And I've had that for a couple of years, actually. Uh, trying to find right side up. I think this one, I can't remember. Anyway, um, so here's some of that gold uh, flecked, you know, uh, uh, twine in there. And then again, just some more simple stitching there, simple stitches. Um, this one it, uh, is also on the back side of some uh, flower, flower sack towel. And then I wanted to incorporate some different fibers in there. And then just kind of adhere that. So none of these things have glue. I'm just doing it all 100% just miscellaneous, you know, stitchings and stuff. So 
There's that. You can use glue if you want to. I'm just challenging myself not to because I'm trying to get better at the slow stitching. So this is one I started a couple days ago and um, um, I'm not really into it yet. Like okay I want to finish want to finish this so there's an element um, I'm going to be doing with this one and I'm going to save that for a, sep a separate you know um, slow stitching in a chat video so I'll put this off to the side but that's just one I've kind of started earlier so some of the materials that I have um, are those fabric squares I showed you there um, I just got these from Embroidery Art by Nat on Etsy and I will for sure link her uh, Etsy shop down below. They're purple and they're super adorable, these little um, embroidery scissors. Now at first I didn't think I would need those because, you know, being a crafter I have lots of other supplies. I have the little yellow bee cutter scissors and then these cutters here, these uh, scissors, and the little yellow bee ones are a little bit smaller, um, but these work, these are much better for me. Um, would do the embroidery but you don't have to have those um, these are just some different um, skeins of some cotton floss that I got at Walmart, or Hobby Lobby and I'm saving some of the other fa uh, the colors I'm using for an active project I'm working on now but I'm gonna be kind of um, this is kind of like a almost like a yellowy white it's really really soft yellow here you get a really pretty baby you know really um, pastel colors of blue and like this kind of lighter green there so I'm going to be using those and then I don't have my pretty dishes out they're all still packed of course so I'm using one of my um, embossing powder trays but here are just some different samplings of different types of fabrics and textiles this is actually vintage for my grandma's um, I got quite a big stack of those um, here's just some more of the cheesecloth I have some different you know like some different uh, fabrics and um, different die cuts actually because I was working on some different craftmas projects and stuff last year and these are some extra bits I have so I'm going to show you how I'm I'm incorporating those just some um, salvage edge some sari silk in there and in this little container um, I just grabbed a couple different spools of some upholstery thread or is it all purpose I can't remember what they all say exactly and and here I have just some snippets and these are just snippets from the the uh, miscellaneous crafting I've been doing um, so I guess, well, let's see, probably since, yeah, since we moved back from, um, Florida, and I, I think I started crafting this stuff again, like in October-ish, somewhere there, so I have a lot more of these put away, my crafting stuff is still packed, but these are just some different, um, you know, little snippets and things that I have readily available, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of get my table cleared off here, move my coffee off to the side, so I don't coffee stain my, my white pillowcase that I'm using, because our, our dining room table is a bit dark, and I'm going to come back on, and we're going to go ahead and just start working on some of these, and be forewarned, um, I am Gabby Abby, so this might be a little bit longer of a video, you of course can skip all of this part and go right to where I'm kind of talking and doing some stitches, if you want to do that, so um, I really enjoy watching long videos. There's a long list of crafters out there um, that I really enjoy watching when I'm not watching classic movies or Skype crafting, and I really enjoy it. So um, I'm trying to not be so down on myself for having um, longer videos and me being so chatty. It's just, that's just who I am. So, um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this part up, the intro up, and kind of get myself a little more organized, and we'll come back on, and we'll just start doing some chatting while I'm doing some uh, slow stitching. So I will see you in just a little bit. Okay, so I kind of get uh, my workspace kind of cleared. I hope the lighting's okay because our um, um, door to the patio outside is to my right. So I'm hoping this looks okay. Might be some shadows, but um, it's okay. So what I've done is, is I went ahead and already cut off a length of um, this cotton floss in this kind of yellowy white kind of color. And um, I have the labels, but I, I've been tossing them into this container so I can um, use them in other crafts because I uh, consider these packaging. But I didn't know which number it was when I took it off. So still learning on that. So ne next time I will, um, you know, make sure to make note of that in case you're curious as to which one, uh, um, color I'm using um, specifically. Put the extra up there. And then I just kind of laid out the little um, other ones I did just kind of like for inspiration for myself and um, I, I dug off the extra or dug out I should say the extra um, or additional little fabrics um, little piles or not piles squares Abby I, I promise you I can speak eloquently it's <laughs> some days it's better than others and so these are the extra ones I had left over um, from doing some random stamping these are not actually stamps these are one of um, Timmy's uh, stencils and I just used um, the archivers ink on that 
thought that'd be kind of fun to mix it up a little bit, having some a different pattern other than you know um, music. Which these are kind of like my um, main ones, like doing different types of scripts and then like different music, and, you know, things like that for background stamping. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit in using my stencils in a different format and kind of challenge myself too. So with that said, I'm not going to start with that one. <laughs> I got to ease into this folks. Got to ease into it. So I don't really take too much time in deciding which uh, stamped square I want to work with. I just kind of jump in and go there. So I think I'll just do this one first. And I might do some of this on um, uh, process videos. So let's sped up a little bit just, um, you know, in case it's because I know I, I have some um, crafty friends out there who like the process videos um, and others who like the real time like this. So I just try to do a little bit of both if I can. Okay, so before I start, um, you know, I'm stitching or anything, I pick out what I want to go on this. Now, what I have here, and I know I touched on this in the um, intro part, but I wanted to kind of expand a little bit more. Let me get this stuff off to the side. My space doesn't normally stay this clear. It'll be like a hot mess before I'm done, so... And this is kind of how I, I like to create, I guess you could say. So also I wanted to incorporate, um, I have more of these, but I can't find the other ones right now. These are from Jolie's. I've had them for forever and a day. And um, you can use, you know, stickers and stuff like that, this on your projects if you want to do that too. And if you don't want the sticky to be on there, you can either cover it with another piece of paper or something like that. Or you can just peel the sticker, sticky part off the back if you're able to do that. Because I've done that many times on other ones. Um, these these were kind of buried. I've used those on projects as well. And then this is some vintage stuff I have. I don't know what, here it is. And I am hoarding this like you would not even believe. I don't even remember where I got it. Um, but I love this. This is about the size, maybe, yeah, except for this little chunk here on the, on, on the right edge. This is the size of it. And I love this so much. And so I really, really try not to um, use that one if I can help it. <laughs> So, but I have some little pieces from other projects, so I stuck those in there. So when you're doing different die cuts and stuff, out of whatever material, you know, it could be fabric, um, cork, paper, of course, whatever, you know, and I had some extra Christmas trees that I didn't use for craftmas projects, and so what I did, there's another one, and what I did is I cut down the center, and I just used this in this kind of fashion, and I have the project done for this, but I don't want to show it yet until I get a chance to upload it by itself because it is something for sale I'm going to be listing to sell. So using the scraps from your different die cuts and cutting them in half, um, doesn't matter if it's a tree or if it's, you know, whatever the shape is, you can cut it into um, the size you want it to be and use it how you would like to do so. Like here is um, a leftover piece from one of the ornate dies that I used. Oops, sorry, I'm trying to grab that there. <laughs> Dog on it. So you can see that. And this is something you could totally incorporate into an, a new project. Sorry about that, you guys. I have to leave my phone on because I'm waiting for a doctor or a call from my doctor. Sorry about that. Okay, now, so I think what I'll do since I was playing with this one, um, I'll probably just use some of this. And so, sometimes what, what I'll do is I'll come into this and I will actually snip even more down more of the fabric, just kind of dependent on how I want this to look. I'm gonna move this, cause that's giving me quite a shadow. That's pro probably much better there. And let's see. So I just kind of, you know, no real rhyme or reason, I just kind of think of like, you know, what colors I wanna incorporate on this. And these are some different, um, there's some different fabrics here. This was, was not copy dyed, I bought it this way. But the this um, pattern here, I did copy dye and it's really really pretty normally the backgrounds like a white and it's go gorgeous that way too but I wanted to kind of have that um, you know a little bit more of that vintage kind of a vibe going on there so I'm not a huge fan of yellow but I'm trying to challenge myself to incorporate um, other colors into my projects especially especially when I'm making something custom or if this is a project I'm just making and gonna sell because not everybody loves purple like me <laughs> or other the other colors I craft with. And there are people who enjoy yellow and stuff. So I'm trying to be a little better about that. So I'm trying to see if I want the scallopy side. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. A little bit rusty because I've been filming videos for a while because, you know, I've really been crafting. <clears throat> just, you know, just because of my current craft room, you know, situation. So, so let me try it this way and see if I like that that direction better and I think I do so I'm going to go I just kind of commit and I just go in and I snip it and I cut it down and 
sometimes I will leave an uh, overhang like this because I like to go back in there and kind of have that frayed edge because I love that kind of distressed look. And my um, wire brush that I normally use for this, I'll link that uh, Quick Tips Abby with Abby um, video below. I forgot to go get it, so I'm just using these dollar store tweezers that I use for crafting. So um, kind of just trying to make do because <laughs> I'm just too lazy to get up and go back out into the RV bay and um, you know grab that. So there's this piece, and I don't want this longer piece on. I know that for sure. So I'll snip this off, and yes, I am that crafter who saves even pieces this size, especially since I'm doing the slow stitching now. So if you don't have space to keep that kind of stuff, of course, don't feel like you have to. All right, so there's that. And let's see here. Do I want to use a little bit of... Now, this is some fabric I got from... I can't remember if it was Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby or Joanne's. I just, I really don't remember. Um, it's just got some really fun script on it. And then I have, this is some ribbon. It's a spool from uh, Meyer Road. Uh, I'm not sure if I have it in here or not. What I will try to do is link some of the materials I'm using. Of course, these are vintage. I can't, you know, link that. But anything like this, like this is a, a spool ribbon from May Arts. Um, yeah, I can link, uh, if I can find it on Joann's, where I bought these, that kind of stuff. So, uh, okay. Let me turn that on vibrate. Actually, it's a little bit too loud. I'm sorry. I can hear if I vibrate. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that, you guys. <clears throat> so even though I might have stamping on the uh, the square, I might want to add a little bit more script. So don't feel like you can't do that because you already have some script on there. I do like this, uh, the word right there. So I might try to have that showing. Let's see, what would look good with the yellow? That would look good. I can even incorporate some of this green, perhaps. Let's try that. So, and this is this is literally how... I, my creative process, I just, I kind of talk to myself, um, I kind of go through it like that and just kind of decide what, what, what I think I like better than others. I'm just cutting here, cutting that down a little bit. And I'm going to cut this down too. I don't want it to be quite that wide. So, and this is sometimes why my videos get long because I, I don't know, I just, I'm not a fast crafter and I need to work, um, not like beat myself up so uh, about that so much I really do and I don't mean to <clears throat> I'm just envious of those that can craft like that it can whip out all kinds of projects like in an hour or something that's just I don't know sometimes I can sometimes I can't so just whatever <laughs> Abby just stop so there's that in the corner there I like that and then I'll put the yellow back on top Maybe I, I want to do it this way, so more of that. No, I like that scallopy bit up there, so we'll do that. <clears throat> and these are just little pieces that I will be using in, um, you know, junk journals, future tomes, and books that I'm going to be making. And I'm also going to be um, putting this, putting a lot of these kinds of projects up for sale as well. Um, so if there are people who, who can't physically, you know, do the slow stitching that, or, or they're not interested in doing it themselves, they just want to have the product, you know, done or whatever, then I, I can kind of offer that for people. So, sorry, I'm not trying to be off camera. I'm just cutting here. Okay, so let's see. Where would I like that to come down? And, you know, some people I might be, um, might think I'm putting too much thought process into this, like, you know, do my little composition like that. But this is, again, just how I, um, this is my, you know, my creative process. So, let's see. Okay. I might change that. We'll see. What's this one look like? Ooh, I like that much better already. So I'm just cutting this down. And then before I start stitching the pieces on, that's when I go through and start fraying the edges and stuff. So, I might need to cut the bottom off a little bit because I don't really want to cut off the flower too much. I should have left a little bit on the top there. That's okay. Let's see. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to leave that like it is, the length it is. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just start kind of doing some stitching. And then because I want a little bit of the stamp to show through because it gives a little more visual texture. So um, I just grab these. And I also want to say that if you're looking... Um, for like, you know, the basic supplies or the, uh, what type of needle to use, whatever, whatever. I'm not your girl for that yet <laughs> because I'm still learning. So I'm sure there's going to be some seasoned, um, you know, embroidery people or, you know, people who do hand sewing or other slow stitchers 
th that might be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's doing it that way or whatever. I'm, I'm still learning. So I am definitely not going to make it out like I know what I'm doing because, you know, I don't. I'm just kind of taking some bits of fabrics and textiles and stitching them together in, um, you know, Abbey fashion. So I'm trying to get this without poking my finger. So I'm using these pins to kind of hold these down into place so I can make sure I'm stitching the right way I want it to go. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from the top or the side. Let's see. Do I want more of this to be over more though? Yeah, I'm going to move this over. I don't really want that much of the green hanging off the edge. There we go. So, for those of you who have seen my slow stitching um, video I did, and or watched Laurel's live last Friday, and I will link her YouTube channel, specifically that video below, so you can go check it out if you haven't already, if you, you know, couldn't join us in a live show. What are, you know, what are your thoughts on the whole slow stitching movement, which is a thing um, that I came across on um, Instagram about eight months ago, eight, eight or somewhere, somewhere on there. And I will link the, um, the first Instagram ac account for slow stitching that I came across and I don't know her first name but her name of her um, Instagram is uh, gentle work and she, she does the most gorgeous um, slow stitching projects I'm just like wow and I kind of went down the rabbit hole on that one and I came across a lot of other uh, slow stitchers and the last time I looked there were close to um, 22,000 almost uh, posts posts on uh, oops upside down on slow stitching on Instagram so this is definitely something that and there is a slow stitch movement I mean I didn't create that hashtag it's it's a it exists and um, I'm just loving this so much especially since I can't you know um, craft in my craft room space yet and um, this is something that's a bit more manageable me for me um, size wise and kind of a little bit easier for me to, to work on when I'm in the house spending time with the family and stuff so I'm I'm very much addicted to this very much so oh I did that too high okay I'm gonna have to pull this closer to me you guys just so I can see a bit better sorry I'm trying to be as transparent as I can on here and now you probably don't have to futz around with this as much as I do I just it's just this is just Abby. <laughs> so, okay. Grab this one more. Here we go. And I know that a lot of you um, already have been doing this. Or you're like, you know, long, you know, lifetime seamstresses or quilters or whatever, whatever. And um, I'm very envious of those. Uh, I'm very envious of the, that skill set. Cause I don't have it, <laughs> so I'm just still, you know, my my first love will always be paper, and that's kind of where my um, experience, I guess you could say, um, comes from. So, okay, so I already got it knotted on the end, and I just grab it a little bit of a length. I don't like measure it or anything. I just kind of eyeball it, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start stitching. So let me go up here. Get myself up here like that. Now I do need to break out my embroidery hoops that I have. Um, a couple of them are easily accessible because I've recently found some. I mean, recently, like in the last couple months, um, at some different um, thrift shops and estate sales and stuff like that that I've been to. And um, to do a lot of the different stitches, let me come down actually a little bit more. There we go, Abby. There you go. See, I told you guys I'm I'm rusty with the the videos right now. And I'm just gonna kind of go in here, and I want I want to start a little bit lower. So I can kind of get that green fabric in. And I'm just doing super, super basic stitches. I mean, this is nothing. But, you know, this is helping me get a little bit more comfortable with um, this, this whole slowing process. And um, learning where to hold my fingers because I'm still learning that. Um, you know, that whole process. I'm not trying to cover everything I'm doing with my thumbnail. Sorry. I um, Oops, I need to back out. I didn't get the green one in. I didn't get the green in there. So I'm probably gonna... Okay, so I um, had to charge my camera. I'm not really quite sure where I left off, so sorry for the abrupt um, transition into this uh, part of the video. So um, I looked up, luckily, <laughs> when I was getting 
start um, stitching on this so so sorry about that so what I've done is took, uh, taken the um, uh, different fabrics that I shared with you in the earlier clip and I just put one pin in it to kind of hold it steady now I'm, I tr I'm not trying to make this like perfectly square and all that stuff I just kind of want this to I'm layering this basically like I do when I'm doing paper crafting and making my collage bits and my collage strips and uh, much like what I've done in my um, tome and I will actually try to remember to show that at the end of this video I'll link the, vi the full video flip of that tome um, Miss Violet below, but just to kind of give you um, a quick look at what I mean by my collagey bits and collagey strips that I do. So I'm not trying to fuss with it too much and make it all perfectly square and that kind of stuff. And since, um, you know, I just use the pin here to kind of hold it close together for me, kind of in the, in the um, you know, the area that I want to start stitching this. So this is, um, sorry if I'm repeating myself, like I said, I didn't, I didn't review the uh, earlier footage before I started filming again. So um, I am in no way, shape or form a seamstress. I am very, very green with this whole slow stitching, hand stitching uh, movement. And I'm just having a, a lot of fun, you know, and I'm just having a great time. I'm gonna start down, let's see. I'll start right about here. I'm just having a lot of fun doing this. And the whole um, idea of the slow stitching and the movement, because there is there that, is a thing if you go to Instagram and you just put hashtag slow stitching movement or you Google it or you um, put in slow stitching or slow stitch you're gonna come to thousands upon thousands of other um, creators out there who have shared photos of their slow stitching projects and um, it's not like the literal or literal term of you know hand stitching or slow stitching it's it's the process of this and um, there are a couple ladies and I will, when I go edit this video, I um, will make a note to myself because I watch it all back and um, link the, the YouTube channels. What is, the, what are their names? I'm trying to remember. And, but they, they they have slow stitching meditation videos that they put up. And so much like adult coloring and that I do and um, uh, working on my, you know, my planner, journaling, things of that nature, and I was pulling this through here, um, you know, this is how a lot of people choose to um, distress themselves, to um, kind of um, distract themselves from pain, which is why I do it. Um, and I, of course, I love crafting in, in general, but, um, you know, it's kind of, that's kind of why I guess I, I'm so attracted to this movement is because, um, oops, I got moved over a little bit because it's 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 another form of creating and being creative and continuing to be like a maker and you know it just happens to have that out of bonus of helping me to um you know try to find some way of um, dealing with my pain and not focusing on it now does this crafting or this um take my pain away no absolutely not i wish it did but it doesn't but it helps me um i guess you could say mentally where um, I, I'm trying to busy my mind with something other than, oh my gosh, my face hurts. I you know I want to I want to cut my face off and I'm I'm hurting so bad, and it helps me. I still have those thoughts in my head kind of a little bit when I'm doing this stuff, but it helps to kind of quiet the noise of that kind of chatter. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I hope this is all making sense for you guys. So again, I think I mentioned the first part, and I get. Again, I apologize if I'm, if I'm uh, repeating myself, but I this isn't like a tutorial on how you need to learn how to slow stitch. No, this is just Abby slow stitching and just turn on the video and chat with all of you and kind of explaining my thought process behind it because I really haven't done that yet. Um, the first slow stitching project I did on, on um, a video was actually on one of my crafty girlfriends, Amy Love's channel, and I of course will link her below. And you can go check out her, that live, I don't remember the exact date, but I will link that particular video so you can um, take a look at that. And so I kind of wanted to do of a more formal introduction of slow stitching and what it means to me and um, sharing how I choose to do my slow stitching projects. And um, you know, I, I'm just treating the fabric. Now I've always used fabric in um, a lot of my different paper crafting journals, 
um, you know, cards, things of that nature. So, so I'm not new to crafting with fabric. What I'm new to um, is the, the process of learning the slow stitching and to try learning um, different knots and different, um, you know, threads and different, you know, um, different types of embroidery flosses to use versus cotton floss versus, you know, um, upholstery thread, heavy duty thread. And I see people using all forms of those um, different types of medium. So I don't know if there's like a specific brand I should be using or a specific type or material I should be using. I'm, I'm still learning. And it's, it's, it's fun to do that. And I'm sorry, my thumb might be um, covering up what I'm doing. I'm just doing like a, you know, basic, you know, running stitch, whatever you want to call it. And it's just been an awesome journey for me. And it has really, really, um, oops, hang on a second. Need to get this closer to my old eyes here. Here we go. And it's really given me another outlet for um, creativity, which I love. I mean, um, all of us who do whatever types of crafting more uh, you're creating, whether it's baking, woodworking, paper crafting, you know, anything like that, anything where you're making something, you know, it is, um, you know, it's a process and we all have a passion for it. And this whole slow stitching has really added to that for me. Now, I'm trying not to be too um, concerned if my different fabrics and materials I'm using kind of slip around on me. Um, I'm trying to get better at that because I keep kind of fussing with this piece of fabric here. If it's a little bit crooked or, or off skew, that's okay. That's just the way it was meant to turn out. So I try not to be too strict on myself about this because, you know, this is a new form of crafting creating to me and I'm trying to tell myself uh, you know, Abby, when you're working with your papers or your journals or uh, other types of crafting that I've done for, you know, decades, give yourself a break. You know, it's it's not that serious. It's fabric and thread. Um, you know, so I'm, I just, I guess I'm a little insecure about it because I am so new to this. Um, hang on a second, I gotta push this down a little bit so I can grab it. And, you know, I'm still learning the different types of tools and materials that I should be using and how I should maybe be, you know, moving the thread in and out of the project, you know, and I'm always welcome to constructive, but uh, polite criticism, not criticism, but um, I don't want, I don't be criticized, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to say like, um, you know, hey, Abby, uh, maybe you, you'll get, um, feel more comfortable with the thread in the project if you're holding your needle this way, or that kind of stuff, so I'm looking for, kind of like, you know, some creative um, tips and um, tips and tricks that you might have, so see, that's a little bit of skew right there, I'm not going to wig out about it. I'm not going to undo the stitching. I'm just going to leave it like it is. And that's just the way it's going to be. So, and I'm telling that to myself. <laughs> so I figure the more I say it, the better off I'm going to be. So, um, and pardon me if I've already repeated this, this part of the, what I wanted to talk about uh, during this video. Um, I'm able to sit in here in the house with the rest of the family. Oops, maybe it helps if you start at the bottom there. Um, the base layer of the fabric and I can sit in here and watch TV. I can watch movies with the family um, You know while because Steve loves to cook so he mostly does the cooking because he actually really enjoys it And since I was a single mom for almost 10 years and I did all the all the cooking. I'm okay with that <laughs> So that's just kind of how, how our family works and I can sit in here and craft and talk with him, hear about Kaylee's day at college or how work went for her that kind of stuff and not that I can't do paper crafting in here, but you know, me running my die cut machines, running my heat tool, um, you know, running my sewing machine or doing paints and sprays and stuff. You know, it's, it's a little bit more distracting um, and it's not as easy for me but because my, I'm not going to, I don't want to subject the family to, uh, you know, that, that my type of noise is when I'm creating. Not that they care, but I don't want to do that. And um, so this has really lent itself to where I can uh, you know, do this in the house. And it's something I can do um, from my bed when I have my days where I, I can't get up because I'm hurting so bad. And I'm um, sorry if the table's shaking. My tripod's kind of touching on the table a little bit. So sorry about that. And, um, you know, this is something portable that's a little bit more manageable for me because, um, you know, I, I have taken like planning supplies with me, but then I feel this um, need to include, oh, I need all 20 of those planner stamps. Oh, I might want six ink pads because I might want to do this or that. And th this is a bit easier for me to kind of um, maintain because this, I could squish this 
whole container into a sandwich baggie versus a couple different types of um, totes and pencil pouches and stuff that I that I normally do. And that's just me needing to learn to kind of slim down, on, kind of scale down on some of my projects, I'm sure, you know, the supplies, but that's okay. And I just find it very therapeutic to do this. It's just a lot of fun for me. I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. And, um, and learning. I'm all about learning. Even though I've been paper crafting for 24 years, uh, 25 actually this year, um, and I am just, uh, no, 25? 20, 24, 25, I forget how many. And um, how many years exactly? And I learn every single day. I've learned so many great paper crafting techniques from people who started a month ago and they they only have two videos on their channel or a, one or two blog posts. That to me doesn't mark the skill set or talent of somebody, um, the number of subscribers or how big their channel is or how many vid videos they have out, that kind of stuff. Um, because there are things that I learned from people who just started doing this type of crafting because it's a di different perspective. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't mean to be on my little um, slow stitching soapbox so long, but, <laughs> you know, about, but this is stuff I think in my head. So I'm just, um, you know, just kind of chit chat with you all, I guess. So, but it's just been really enjoyable and it's been fun to incorporate different materials and, um, you know, fabrics and textiles and things that are from my family that are vintage or items that um, I found at different thrift shops or maybe it was one of my favorite blouses or something and, and I don't wear it anymore because it's too worn or the kids' is, you know, some of their sport jerseys and t-shirts from their um, different activities when they were in grade school and middle school. It's just kind of like another way for me to incorporate those types of materials into my crafting projects. So. Um, you know, it's kind of like a little bit of memory uh, stitching for me too in that aspect. And, you know, again, I am broadening my um, sewing skills and crafting skills. And so, like I said, this is very basic. I know that what I'm doing here. I am going to um, switch over to do some crosses and some seed stitching here in just a little bit. I just kind of wanted to get the base layer down. So I'll I'll go um, and add more stitching like I'll, you know, I can do like some seed stitching in here or even in between these here. And my nails are a janky mess. Don't look too close. I need to, my appointment's in a couple days. So, sorry about that. If that kind of thing bothers you, it doesn't bother me when I'm watching videos, but um, just wanted to mention it. Because <laughs> my nails aren't looking 100% right now, but they're, they're, they're still purple, so yay for that. So, um, there are a couple of the knots, well, not a couple, there are probably about five or six different knots I'm trying to learn right now. And um, I didn't even know that those were considered embroidery knots, like the French knot or, you know, the um, Sorbello knot, those kinds of things. I, I'm just totally clueless because this is, you know, a new area for me. And I've always appreciated people's embroidery work and their knitting and crocheting. I mean, um, there are people on Etsy who um, do those types of arts and I purchased those their pieces of work, artwork, just to display in my craft room or my home somewhere or to give to a friend for a gift. And um, I just, I'm really getting deep into this and I, I'm really loving it. I really am. You might already be wise to that since I've been saying that <laughs> throughout the, this whole video. So, and this is what I'm talking about. I'm like 13 minutes, almost 14 minutes into this next clip and this is all I've gotten done. I don't know why I put this pressure on myself, you guys. I don't know how to, I don't know the right way to get me to stop doing, beating myself up about it. You know, it is called slow stitching, which is perfect for Abby. But, um, you know, it's not, it's not a race. It's not about trying to get something done in a short amount of time or whatever, or in a certain, you know, a 20 minute video or something like that. But I'm just, I'm so envious of these other crafters I watch who can do full blown projects and like, 15 minutes. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, it takes me 15 minutes just to figure out what piece I want to put on top of, you know, the whatever the project is, paper or whatever. So I don't know. I just need to chill out. And, you know, and when I'm not filming myself, obviously it's my first time to film myself actively slow stitching. I don't beat myself up quite as much as I am as I'm talking here because it is a little bit more of a meditative process for me. But, you know, I want to 
chat with all of you. It's fun for me. It's a little one-sided, of course, but um, I feel like I'm crafting with friends right now. And um, the house is actually a bit quiet. Steve's out um, doing some stuff, and Kaylee's upstairs. And um, I'm not going to ask my family to, hey, can you mute the TV for 20 minutes? Or, hey, can you guys stop talking about this or whatever? Um, and not throwing shade at people who do. This is this is just Abby here because I don't want to inconvenience them because I'm wanting to do a crafting project or whatever. I just I just don't want to do that because I already feel like I'm being invasive. I'm just having this all over the dining room table. So I'm usually more quiet. I'm not like talking to myself at least at least out loud like this because <laughs> I'll get myself lost in watching a classic movie or catching up on YouTube videos. Um, those kinds of things. Or just having some different music. I have some really great channels and I can share those in a later video if you guys are interested in this. That I mean you can just do a search for, you know, um, you know, sleep music or study music or, you know, different things like that. Um, cause that's what I did. And I've been doing that for quite a few years now. And I have a couple favorites that I listen to that really help me relax my mind enough to kind of drift off to sleep and um which is hard for me. Sleep is hard to, for me to come by because of my pain and stuff. But I found that these those types of channels re really do help me with that a little bit. And so sometimes I'll sit there and listen to that while I'm just slow stitching. Sometimes it makes me drowsy, but that's okay because I I can put it down. And I can go take a nap. I mean, you know, not because I'm lazy. It's you know I'm um, have a medical two medical things going on that are pretty um, severe and severe enough to where my, my doctors won't even let me work anymore outside the home. And this isn't about my trigeminal neuralgia, um, but it is part of my life. And I do, um, I have added this slow stitching into my daily life as part of one of my distraction techniques. So anyway, so that's kind of, that, those are the kinds of things that I listen to um, or watch when I'm doing this, when I'm not talking to the family or, you know, that kind of thing. So it's been a lot of fun for me really do enjoy it. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of finish up just doing this random stitching on this piece here and I'll come back on when I'm doing like some of the crosses or some of the seed stitching. I'm not confident enough yet in my skills to do um, the four, is it five or six? Four. About five different stitches that I'm still practicing. Um, I'm, I'm just not comfortable yet, so I kind of want to do that on my own, and then when I feel a little bit more confident in it, then I will um, start introducing more of those types of stitches in my project. So this is very, very, very basic, um, generic type stuff I'm doing, and, um, you know, and just so you know, these are not, I'm not in trying to make these the same space apart and the same length. Um, I'm just kind of doing random stitching. Let me show you a project I'm working on. I always work on about four or five different things at a time. It's just kind of my brain works. And I'm not going to show you a whole lot because I'm still working on it. It's going to be a separate video. And this is something I'm going to be putting up for sale as well. But I can make my stitches look more uniform whenever I'm trying to do that. You know, like down the side here. Um, this is kind of like a little bit of random stitching that I'm kind of doing right here. So um, just you know that I, I'm not thinking, oh, girl, your stitches are on point. No, I'm just playing around. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera and finish up doing some basic stitching on, on this. Um, the next clip might be um, a process because my face is really, really um, hurting. Like the numbness is really pronounced right now. And I feel like I can't talk um, as um, appropriate as I want to. Not appropriate, but as eloquently, I guess you could say. A little self-conscious about it. So the next clip might be um, to music, but um, I'll try to come back on and do a little bit more chatty. So.
Okay, so now it's a couple hours later and of course the sun is set and um, I, I close the blinds to my right because it's like pitch dark outside. I have an alt light or alt lamp on my table that I'm um, using, but when I go to film with it, it's like just blows out the screen. So I'm hoping that the just the kitchen light and the um, light above the dining room table is bright enough. We haven't changed out any of the lights and things like that inside the house yet because we've been kind of focusing on Abby's craft room. Yay! My husband's choice, not mine. Anyway, so I, what I wanted to do is come back and probably just do a, two, a couple more of these and probably end this video because I'm always so worried about it being too long and everything. So while we were having dinner, well, after I had my dinner, Steve and Caleb were still, eat, um, still eating. We were watching something on TV. So I kind of went ahead and finished this one here and I meant to kind of film myself doing it. Uh, really sorry about that. I did not mean to. I just got in the mood, I guess, to kind of really finish it. So I posted on my Instagram, and if you aren't following me there, I would love it if you did. I share all kinds of behind the scenes stuff and sneaky peeks and um, little video clips and um, pictures. Um, not not just of crafty stuff, but like of my life, especially showing the purple love. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> anyway, um, so I showed uh, or posted a picture saying that I have finally, I'm not going to say mastered, because I'm not there yet, but I'm finally able to do the Sorbello stitch on a project, not on a sample piece of fabric. And this is what I've been doing. And I'm going to keep all my um, samples like this, because I think it's really cool. I'm going to make my, I'll, I'll share with you what I'm going to be doing with these when I'm done. I'll just wait till then. So I just took some different, um, you know, scrap pieces of fabric. And then this was my first one. And I did really good on my first try, right? But consistency seems to be an issue here with me. Not, uh, I don't know why, it just is. So this was my best one, and it kind of started to go downhill after that. So I'm still working on this, but I, you know, is this the most perfect Sobello stitch? No. Um, probably the best one I've done, in my opinion, is probably these two right here. And the one I did on this actual little project piece it turned out um, not better than the than those samples that I showed you, but I'm still very, very proud of it. I love it, and I did it. I'm so excited. So I'm having a lot of fun learning different stitches, whether it be just for, you know, slow stitching or for um, uh, embroidery, that kind of stuff. So there is that piece. So what I wanted, what I did because of time issues, um, um, my my issue, my worry, not, not your guys's, um, you can see my shadow on the tablecloth, on the pillowcase. I, I talk with my hands. I went ahead and kind of um, pulled out some different materials that I wanted to put on these last two samples I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see me a little bit better. There we go. Husband is at um, practice for a um, concert he's going to be doing with his brothers at um, uh, their church. Very excited to um, to go and see that. Um, I think it's next weekend, I think. I have to look at the, you know, the family schedule to know. And then Kaylee is upstairs doing homework I, I, or gaming. I'm not sure which one, one of the two. So I, I thought I'd go ahead and just finish us tonight since I had um, a little bit of quiet time. Okay, so what I did, let's pull this one off to the side for now, is I wanted to grab the one with this image. I love this stamp image. I just think it's so pretty. I think this is off the Prima stamp. And if I can find these stamps online, I will link those as well. But um, I know I bought this one at Tuesday morning in the Clarence, or not the Clarence section, but this in the craft section at Tuesday morning. So I don't know if it's retired or what. So I wanted to use this one as the as the base for this next little, um, uh, you know, slow stitch panel or whatever I want to call what whatever I decide to call these little bitty things. And I like this trim. This is not old, but I like how it looks and it feels and it's got a really pretty look to it. And I'm in love with this fabric. I bought a couple yards of, of this and I just, I love it. I think it's just, and it's a pale pink and I just think it's so, so pretty. It's got those little fuzzy bits. They almost look like uh, French knots, but I don't remember. I asked a group of my friends what this kind of fabric was called. One of them told me and I have already forgotten. So please forgive me if I don't, uh, say the actual name of this. And then this is just some offcuts, a little fabric scraps from another dye I was using, 
around Christmas time. And then I went to my Sari Silk and I grabbed this little snippet that was in that little uh, pail I showed you earlier. But I, I didn't, I wanted something with a little bit more interest on it than just this. So I just went to uh, my, this particular Sari Silk bundle and I am that crafter, that girl who kind of cuts in the middle, who cuts, I kind of cut out little bits I want. And I mean, there's a lot here. I still have a lot of, you know, yardage at continuously, but I went in, I kind of snipped out this little section here because my favorite parts of the Sari Silk, um, little, um, I don't know if we call them skeins or bundles or whatever. I like where they come, where they're stitched together. I, I'm such a tactile person. I love the way it feels and I love the visual um, texture and interest with that. So I grabbed that one and it already has kind of like a distressed look. I, I don't have to ink this or anything. So I was thinking um, this, not on the very tippy top, but kind of like right there. If I make sure you can guys, I'm, I'm still in frame. I wonder if I should put down Okay, let's see if this blows out the camera when I do this because it might be, just because the lighting I'm worried about you being able to see what I'm actually working on is that better a little better I don't know I don't know but um I think I can see the definition of the fabric better than what I um, had originally so and I like let's see either side's fine but I kind of want the ones that are kind of going upwards a little bit so I'm gonna just think about putting that like right there and then um, this on top like that. Where'd my paint go? Did I leave it down here? Oh, I did. There's the rest of my stuff. Oops, let me put this down first. So, like, like so, like that. And then this piece across here. Or was I gonna do this piece or was I gonna switch to the, I don't, Remember, that was for the other one I'm doing. I don't remember. Let me see. Let's put this down here like this, like that. And then we can do the... My original plan was to do this. Let me show you. It was like this. And then I had this little snippet of a doily that I was just going to um, put like right there, like that. And I liked this little piece too, like, you know, stitching this over top because I like the way the, the little um, threads are, but... Um, I decided not to. I'll probably use these two on, on another sample because I really like how those look together. But, um, oh, I know what I was going to do. Was I doing this? Oh, my goodness, you guys. I swear. I swear my memory is, like, not, like, with it all the time. Was I doing that with it? I don't know if I was or not. Let's see. And then having this kind of go over the top. That's kind of what I was thinking for this piece, is kind of keeping it a little bit simple. You might be thinking, uh, Abby, that's considered simple. Well, 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 if you look at a lot of my projects, past projects, or things that I make, uh, this is not, this, this is very tame <laughs> for what I normally do for projects. And I think it looks really good, I like it. And let me see, put these off to the side so I don't forget. So I'm gonna work on this one. And then after I do some stitching on that one, I will switch over to, to this little sample here. Now, because it's slow stitching and Abby is a slow crafter, um, I, I'll probably start this on like real time. And then I'll probably kick over to this next one, finish this one in process as well as this one. Um, because I can kind of talk you through my thought process here. So I chose this one because I wanted to use the um, the stencil print from Timmy. I, I love on, let me try to do it this way. I love on the top edge of that, of that um, edge, that little rough edge there, you, you can see the darker inking. I love that. So I didn't want to cover that part of it because I liked how that looked. Um, this is some of that um, Maya Road trim, or excuse me, May Arts trim that I mentioned earlier. At least I think I did. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, there's that. And then this is some awesome fabric that I picked up. I can't remember where I found this, but I love it. I have like maybe a couple yards left, and I try to ration it because I think it's so cool. I don't know where I, I could ever repurchase this again. I've never, never seen it before, but I really like it. So I thought about putting it right there. And this is some fabric that I purchased from Walmart. In the It's the Waverly brand. I believe that's what it, the brand is. And it looks like this originally. It came in a two yard bundle. I really love this. I love I love the, just the kind of natural color in the background, very pretty. But I really um, enjoy the um, coffee dyed, tea stained dyed look 
where my bigger piece goes. Oh, here it is. I could show you on a bigger sample. So I just took a little section and dunk it in some coffee and tea that I was using for a different project, dyeing project, and I just used that. So I like how that looks. So this right here, this is on the salvage edge, which I love. So I kept that because I love that look. Now the, the top and the sides, I would like to have a little bit more distressed to kind of match this one a little bit on the edges. So since I don't have my little, um, uh, what was I tell, telling you? I don't have my wire brush here. Oh my gosh, Abby. I'm just going to use, I can either use my fingers, my fingernails work pretty good, or just these tweezers. I'm going to fold this in half so I don't have to do this. You know, I can get uh, done faster. So I'm just going to pinch up the top and then I'm just, you know, just taking the tweezers and just kind of going back and forth, back and forth type motion. And then I get that kind of scraggly distressed edge that I really like. So and I'll probably do it on the sides here real quick too. So, um, let's see. What was I saying? Oh, the, the next, the rest, of the other two samples I'm going to be finishing. I don't know why I'm calling them samples. They're not samples. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me today. But I'm going to finish those on process because, like I said, it's, you know, I always worry about time limit and stuff. Or not limit, but time. Try to be sensitive about that because I know not everybody has time to watch an hour video, um, of course. So there is that. And that was just to protect any or catch any loose threads that might have fallen off after I did that. So I love how this looks now. I mean, I loved it before too. It was, it was great, but I'm really in a, in a distressed kind of uh, shabby, um, not scraggly. <laughs> I'm not a scraggly kind of girl. Uh, I guess it's kind of like, a, you know, kind of like a, dist I guess it's the two words I used, you know, shabby and, dist and distressing. I love that. So I am happy with how that looks and that'll go there. And I think that's all I'm going to do for this one because, um, I think the color of the fabrics and the different um, textures, um, the different um, needlework that's on there, and then the the printing that's on that my oh not my road, my uh, may art. It's not why I keep saying my road, and I think it kind of, kind of adds enough to it for me. And I'll just kind of do some stitching. Now, one little thing I might add is I have a bag of some uh, wooden buttons. I'm not sure where they are on the table right now, but I might come back maybe put a button in here or something like that. But Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of get myself set up and come back on and I'll start um, stitching this one together and this one as well. So I will see you in the next clip. Decided as I was kind of um, finishing up this uh, attaching the sari silk, I thought I wanted it a little bit more um for something else to be on here. So this is that little scrap of fabric that I shared with you in the last or when I was showing you this little bit there, 
and I, what I did is I threaded up another needle and I'm using this uh, green oh goodness Abby I'm going to show you where's the item? Oh, I poked through it but that's kind of that's the item number I guess and that's the other side this is really pretty green so um, I put that puts um, went ahead and threaded it I'm doing a double thread on this one and I kind of held this together so what I'm going to do and this is actually the same process I use my paper crafting like I will um, in my tomes and stuff when I'm making my um, collage bits and collage strips and again I will show that book so I don't I haven't forgotten it's like right there um I will do all my stitching and layering and everything like that on that item and then I will glue it into the book on the edge of the book sometimes I do stitch it on the on the edge but if I'm not really wanting to have that stitched look on the back side of the page or, you know, the different um, envelope flap or whatever I'm using it in that particular journal or tome, then I just glue that to the page. And kind of taking that thought process here, um, this could think it'll be easier for me since I am um, still so new at doing this um, type of crafting. It makes me comfortable, feel comfortable, so I'm doing that. Oh, I do want to mention, I know that... Um, you probably saw me struggling with this a little bit. I know this is way too long of a length for this, but um, this is getting kind of hard to thread through because um, I, I dyed this myself and I got it tangled. And anyway, I kind of got it messed up. So I don't really want to have to rethread this onto a different needle. So I just left the length that I have. And I, again, I know it's way too long because I was kind of fumbling. But, um, you know, I'm learning as I'm going. So I'm going to go ahead and just come up from the bottom. I have to tell you, my acrylic nails really work well as a thimble. Just pulling that through, and I'm not doing any any fancy stitching or I'm I'm just putting this putting this through the fabric and making it kind of go together. And I liked that pop of um, sorry, I know it's kind of small. My nails are probably covering up what I'm doing. Um, I really like this pop of this green to kind of go against the um, the uh, this is the Potter soil. At Potter soil, I believe was the name of the archivers ink potting soy that's what it is um just kind of a neat little contrast and i like that so i'm just kind of going in and out in and out nothing fancy for sure i've been working on the um french knot and i'll show that one to you um again this is my little practice fabric no laughing <laughs> I kind of doing this I don't know what happened here in the middle <laughs> I kind of got messed up but um I think my first and these last two here are pretty good for you know me just, just trying now I do know on the videos that I'm watching the um the people and showing you know doing the tutorials they have their fabric in an embroidery hoop and I know that that'll make this a lot easier for me because I'm trying to hold this and pull the thread through and yeah, trying to keep the, the fabric uh, flat and straight. So um, I do have a bunch of embroidery hoops, but they're all kind of packed. I I do have um, a few, at least two, that I know of that are a um, little more um, accessible because I've purchased them from some estate sales and thrift shops and whatnot um, since our move back home to Oregon. So um, I don't remember what size they are, but I, I'm going to go ahead and go out there and get that and then just put some more, you know, I'm just using some muslin, just really inexpensive. I think it was like $2.99 a yard or something at Joann's. I have a lot that I've purchased in um, the remnant sections as well. So, and I'm not wasting this because I'm going to be using all my sample pieces for something. And I'll share that once I um, am done with that. So I like how that looks, just kind of basically doing it just the way I like it to look. And, um, Maybe I will go ahead and just stitch this straight onto the onto the fabric. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So I haven't really decided placement. I just knew I wanted a little something else on there. So maybe something like that right there. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see it too. I'm thinking maybe doing it there. And I also thought about the idea of um, giving this a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit more visual texture down here and possibly doing the same thing on this pink on this uh, little bit of pink material and kind of bunching it up maybe I know it's hard to see because my fingernails are in the way maybe something like that I don't know we'll see but I'm gonna go ahead and um, stitch this on because I do like how that looks right there so let me just poke this through 
and attach this to this little uh, slow stitch. Make sure I don't get this caught up in the mess here, or in the mix, I should say. Okay, I'll just make sure to stay away from that right there. And just do what I've been doing, just going up and down, up and down. And I'm not trying to do any, you know, fancy stitches or not, um, knots or anything. I'm just simply sticking the fabric to this other um, piece of fabric that I'm working on, this little textile art piece. Not, you know, I'm not calling myself an artist because I'm not, but the textile art look, I guess I'm trying to say. So just kind of going back and forth until I feel like I have enough of the green on there. Let me go through this little loop right there and kind of tack that down. So as I'm, the more, the more I do this slow stitching and um, also hand stitching, of course, I, uh, you know, I'll get better and I'll know how to hold the needle properly and how to fix little loops that have popped up instead of trying to stitch them back down again, stuff like that. That's all part of the learning curve for me and learning process and I'm really excited about that. All right, so I like how that looks. I think that's enough green. So I'm going to go ahead and just go back here and do a little back, sti back stitch, but I'm also going to just do the knot because I like doing both ways because I'm not really confident in my Closer, closing stitches, I guess you could say, and um, and all that. So I'm just going to go ahead, ooh, where's my other needle that I use? Here we go. To kind of hold this down so I can do a little knot here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this, snip this off, believe myself enough to do um, a little knot, put you off to the side. Now I could take that down and tie it like I would when I'm sewing in signatures and stuff, but um, I kind of want to do a little loopy because I feel like that's going to be a little more secure. Why? I don't know, but we'll see. If I can get it to twist up here a little bit better. Okay guys, it's been a couple days since the last clip um, on this video I'm filming. Hopefully the lighting's okay. It's kind of gray overcast today. Um, but when I turn on my alt light, um, it like just, you know, whites out everything. It's just kind of weird. So you might hear some talking in the background. My husband, Steve, is upstairs in the office. And because um, I am still working in the uh, living room right now until, until we get um, my rooms done. So uh, let's see here. I showed you those samples in the intro. I'm trying to remember where I left off. So I don't know if I shared this or not in the video. If I did, I'm so sorry. Um, I'll try to cut that part out if I remember. Um, anyway, so I just did the, the Sorbello stitch. I'm so excited because I finally did it on a project instead of just on my sample fabric. So uh, um, this is perfect. No, but it's probably one of the best ones I've done. So I think it's really cool. So it's like right there. It's just like a, a little pretzel. Anyway, so I finished this one off. Um, there's that one. And then I kind of started collecting or gathering um, little bits of fabric and such for the next one that I want to make. I'm pretty sure I talked to you about this one because I like the darker edges right there from the inking. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can finish this one. So I'll do this one like in real time since this is going to be slow stitching and a, you know, chat or whatever, whatever I want to call this. So I need to be chatting with you guys while I'm working on some of them. I might finish this one too. We'll see. I, I started this one a few days ago. Well, not a few days ago. Uh, probably a day or two before I filmed the first clip of this video. So maybe five, six days ago, something like that. And I just wasn't feeling it, so I kind of set it off to the side. And um, I'm kind of feeling it today, so we'll see if we get to that. Um, I am, however, should I show you a little sneaky peek of something that I'm working on? Um, just a little tiny peek, because I want to wait until I get this done before I show, show too much. Now, I'm still doing in the... Um, nothing is hardly stitched down yet, but um, this little peeky at what I'm working on right now once I get this done. So let's see here. This is some of the ribbon and then something I do in my paper crafting. Um, I'll use, use well, sometimes use my tiny attacher or um, this little, if you don't know what that is, let me show you. I think, I think I brought it in the house. It's just a little tiny stapler from Tim Holtz. Did I bring it in the house? I thought I did. Uh, I guess I didn't. Sorry about that. Um, oh, here it is. And Be Bella, she decides to play with her squeaky toy. So this is a tiny attacher from Tim Holtz and um, the Staples, um, per the name, they're, oh, where are they? Oh no, I'm at, oh, there they are. I was like, I thought I just put Staples in here. So um, let me grab this one out. 
Bella, no, no, don't play with that toy right now. And um, this shows you how tiny the staples are. Oh my goodness, Abby, get it together. So they're just really cute little tiny staples. That's kind of uh, something like, not really signature, I guess you could say, but I always find myself putting, you know, three little staples on my project. So anyway, with all that said, I kind of wanted to do that with this project because I want, let me zoom this a little bit more. There we go. Because I want um, these pieces on here, but I really want more of this fabric to show with the little um, stitch flowers on there, which I did not do. I bought this fabric from, I can't remember where. It was thrifted. I just don't remember where. So I, what I'm going to, what I want to do is I want to kind of, um, let's see, I had it perfect before I turned the camera back on. So I kind of want it to look like this. So it's, it's folded up a little bit, but I can still see both of the flowers. So I'm just going to use this um, fabric. Where's my little, or er, thread, I mean. Um, she's over here around by my feet. She's so cute. She's our little mini dots in the case um, I have any new followers who don't know who Bella is, what I'm talking about. So I have this leftover from another project. I think it was actually, no, it was something different. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish off this little strip. Let me tie my little knot here. So I have just been having such a good day today. Um, we went out to, how do I explain it? Their family. It's my one of my brother-in-law's, his mother and father-in-law. I'm just tying it up. <laughs> Just, I'm a, you're not missing nothing exciting. <laughs> and we went out there today because his wife, um, so my brother's mother-in-law and her sister, they do, they have this business that's called Two Sisters Treasures. And what they do is they sell um, like rustic farmhouse stuff, things that are shabby chic, painted, chippy, vintage, things like that. And what I will do is I did a video, it was a few months before we moved to Florida, I had a table out there and I walked around to the little vloggy bit. So I will link that video below in case you're interested. And then, um, yeah, so went out there looking for a uh, vintage door for me, for my craft room, um, for the first, you know, the first floor of the craft room. And um, we got, got a couple ideas. She has some that I fell in love with, but they're just a little too wide. Um, and Steve said, you know, we could widen the doorway or whatever, but, you know, I don't want to keep adding more and more to what, what we need to get done. So I can just get in there. <laughs> so um, we looked at that today. She has some, I'm looking for chandeliers too. And I'm just doing some random stitches in here. I'm not trying to, to make like a pattern or anything like that. I'm just trying to just basically get this stitch together, kind of, you know, making it a little bit interesting, but you know, not trying to do any special kind of knots or anything like that. And so that was fun. So I got some ideas. She has a chandelier out there that I fell in love with, and we're going to still shop around for, you know, a few more, because it's, it's going to be out there, so it's not like it's some big rush or anything. And she, in, in their different, um, you know, uh, pick and trips and things like that, when they go junk in, she's going to keep her eye out for me for um, a bunch of vintage linens and fabrics and things like that, because she sees that kind of all the time. And she gets her... she. I'm envious of because she is uh, like a great barter person. Steve's this way too. I get too embarrassed to do it, but um, she finds things for the most amazing prices. So she's just going to keep her eye out for me. I showed her, I showed her um, some pictures of the soul stitching I've done thus far. And she's like, oh my gosh, because a lot of people think I just do paper crafting, which is totally fine because that's, in reality, that's what I do. My first love is paper. But when I was showing her the different slow stitching projects I've been doing, and she knows that I do fabric books and stuff too. I'm trying to find that thread so I can pull it out. There we go. And um, so she, yeah, she's going to keep her eye out for me on some different fabrics and linens. I was a little bit gutted because when I was show, uh, showing her the slow stitch stuff, she said, oh no, because I wish I would have known a couple weeks ago because she had a huge like bags full of the, the, you know, different linens and fabrics and things like that, laces and stuff, and she just donated all of it. She didn't know what to do with it, and I was like, oh no. So now that she knows, she's going to keep her eye out for me, and she'll find some stuff for me, so really excited about that. Okay, and again, this is not a tutorial, so I know you're not, my hands are kind of in the way a little bit, but this is just, you know, me kind of fooling around. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and end this one off. I'm going to tie it off right on the back side here because I want to um, keep using this particular needle. 
So I'm kind of slowly finding my um, uh, different needles that I like to work with and uh, the most so far. And um, this is one of my favorites. It's just nothing special. But I, I, I like the way it kind of feels in my hand, so to speak. And, um, you know, so it's been fun, you know, find, trying to find my groove with this. And I think I'm getting pretty close. I don't seem to be holding that fabric as awkwardly as I did in the beginning. <laughs> so that's always a good thing. I'm just tying this knot off, you guys. Nothing special. So I'll come back in frame here in just a second. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail because I like how that looks. So it kind of, I like how that kind of dangles down like that. Much like what I do on my paper crafting. All right, I'm going to pause real quick because I'm going to thread this needle. And that's not very exciting to do. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I decided to reach for um, this variegated um, cotton floss uh, little bundle here. I like the colors of this. I think it's going to go well with the um, kind of cranberry color in this piece of fabric. I think and it's something different. Um, you know, not just using the different you know beige and creams and things like that. So let's go ahead and get this going. Oops, got stuff all over the place. Okay. So, um, yeah, we went out there today, and um, then Steve, uh, we went to Walmart real quick because I needed to um, get some packing supplies. I got some things I need to mail out. So, all right, where do I want to start with this one? I think what I'll do is just kind of go here. I can start from this back. And I, I don't um, try to cover the entire project with uh, stitches, which I love. And that's actually going to happen on the one I just showed you the sneaky peek of. So that will be a thing. Um, but, you know, I just try to just have fun with it and, um, you know, basically embellish this as much like I do paper, you know, projects and scrapbook pages and cards and tags and all that kind of fun stuff. So just kind of fun to incorporate that into this. Let's see here. If it's a little bit crooked, that's okay. I'm trying to not... Um, be so concerned with that which is really weird for me because I don't do that one of my other types of crafting so I'm not really sure why I I don't know maybe like I said for probably a thousand times already that um, you know I don't have a hundred percent confidence in the slow stitching like this because um, you know I mean I've stitched things before on lots of my projects and journals and tomes and all that kind of stuff like you know whether it be hand stitching or I'm using my sew machine stuff like that and um, so last night I had some really good slow stitching kind of meditation quiet time um, Kaylee had already went upstairs to bed and Steve went upstairs to do some stuff in his office and I just sat down here and I was just I had a classic movie playing in the background. Um, the um, oh my gosh, I just completely forgot the name of the of the movie. But it, uh, I was watching that, and um, just kind of you know just kind of uh, relaxing and just kind of you know halfway listening, halfway watching the video the movie, and um, just kind of having a good time. Just think, and my mind would wander to um, like stuff for my crafting room my room is like you know some finishing details and kind of in my mind thinking about where I want uh, where where I want to put which piece of furniture and stuff like that so and I'm just really enjoying this a lot and then um, it's just I don't know I just really really love this it's just so relaxing and soothing and again I'm not trying to make any type of pattern I'm just kind of putting this where I um, I don't know where it just kind of shows up I guess so and I wanted to apologize for the lack of videos on my channel um, lately uh, like actual videos like this where I'm actually crafting creating and even doing tutorials which this is not again <laughs> um, I am getting to a point where I am going to um, you know kind of get back into that groove a little bit more and I'm pretty excited about that because I have definitely missed chatting with all of you and doing videos and I, I have a ton of different projects and things I've been working on and I just haven't shared them yet um, you know because I want to 
I don't know. I don't know why it really happened. Well, there's, well, there's a few things I'm working on that um, are pretty close to being done, like maybe 85, 90% done. So I just kind of want to get those um, projects finished off. But I've been doing lots of um, like ephemera items, kind of like, you know, behind the scenes and stuff to put into future tomes and journals and things like that. Let's see. Let's go back up over this way. And there. And I've been look. I looked on Amazon a couple nights ago for the um, different. Th uh, I almost said fingles. I was gonna try to say. Uh, um, oh my goodness! I just totally lost the thimbles and finger to the same time. <laughs> and there was a video I watched, and I will um, link it below directly to that video and it was on I think a quilting channel but you know um, you get the suggested video whenever you're watching something specific or whatever so I'm kind of getting um, like uh, um, I'm looking for Abby uh, quilting videos and things like that kind of showing up and this lady was talking about um, how I completely forgot the name of the type of um, oh my goodness you guys the type of stitching needlework that this lady was doing it's Japanese I just can't remember what it's called I'll look here in a second and I'll tell you but anyway this lady was talking about the different types of thimbles and finger guides and stuff to use when you're doing that particular type of stitching or any stitching in general so I was looking on Amazon trying to find a um, a good thimble or two for me I'm easy. I'm able to push this one through because this is like not very thick, and it's just you know, I can use my acrylic nail kind of. But the one I'm working on now, um, the one I just showed you the sneaky peek of, it's uh, you know it's going to get a little bit more difficult for me as as I go on because I have so many different types of textiles um, layered together. So if you have any good suggestions on different you know thimbles or different um, you know thumb guards or whatever they call them. I would love to know if you want to share that with me in the comment section because I really don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, like I said, this is a fairly new type of crafting for me. And so I'm not really sure which different tools to, you know, kind of gather and stuff. So I'm liking how that looks so far. It looks pretty cool, right? I like that a lot. So I'm, I'm trying to, let's see where it does go. I'm going to start moseying my way towards the left here a little bit, a little bit more. So it will come off trying to come up underneath that corner if I can. There we go. So. Oh, and last night before, when I was trying to fall asleep, because um, I usually like listen to like different meditative, non-guided. I don't want the talking. I just want the music part. And I'll sit there and I'll journal in my um, pain journal that I keep for, um, for my trigeminal neuralgia. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll do like the little adult coloring books and stuff like that. But having this slow stitching um, as another layer of my um, distraction techniques and kind of trying to focus on my pain, or not on my pain, but trying to focus on something other than my pain. Um, I was reading through that book I showed you guys. I don't know if I showed it in the beginning of this video or not. I'll grab it here in a second and show it to you. But it's about slow stitching. And I, I had my you know my little meditation music kind of going on in the background. And... Um, it's actually not like specifically meditation. I think it's like sleep, relaxing, study, you know, that kind of thing. And I was just kind of reading through that book, making notes um, in my little stitches book that I um, have. And it's kind of writing down some different stitches that I want to learn. And then I write it down and I kind of just search, you know, YouTube to find those videos where I learn those stitches. And then also um, other stitching books that are out there because there's there's a ton of course and um, the reason I chose the one that I have currently um, I flipped through and I liked you know I you can see like the um, Amazon will give you like you know a few pictures of the inside of the book and whatever and I love the the, um, the quality of the pictures in that book I like the different chapters and how they described it. Um, that book does a real, really good job of explaining, you know, the whole slow stitching thing. And um, so I was kind of writing down some other books I, I'm interested in per, uh, purchasing and just stuff like that. And I found myself actually nodding off 
a lot quicker than I normally do. Um, so for me, I usually can drift off to sleep about three or four in the morning and I sleep for a couple hours and I wake back up again and I don't sleep very good. That's why mornings are harder for me. Like I tr try to make my doctor appointments in the afternoon and, you know, trying to do stuff with friends or family or whatever in the afternoon because mornings are just really, really hard for me. So I, I don't know if it was a combination of me just being super tired every day, like exhausted or whatever, but I just felt really relaxed and, you know, I was, uh, so I'm really excited about it. It's just like a re that's like reason 101 why I like this this slow stitching um, whole thing. So hopefully I'm not repeating myself too much, and you guys are like, uh, you already told us that like you know five minutes ago. So let's see. I'm liking how that's looking so far. Really cool. Really really cool. Kind of working my way over. I think what I want to kind of do is, and this was not planned, is. Um, kind of have it start like from here and then maybe kind of go up over there a little bit off to the side so I'm gonna start um, stitching my way over there and we'll see how that looks okay oh I like how that looks it is so cool looking let me think here for a second where I want to kind of go I think I kind of want to maybe go off down towards this corner a little bit so we'll just see where the stitches take me do I want to kind of go back up here a little get a little bit and do it let's see let me kind of work my way back over here and we'll kind of take a look at this and I just might be you know close to being done here or being done at all okay let me hold this corner down there we go okay so let's see don't where I want to go down again you know and again these are just going to be like little embellishment pieces that you can add to projects you know to a journal or um, if you're working on um, you know tags or just anything you could think of you, you could add these little pieces together so basically I'm just making like my own little bit of um, you know ephemera and embellishments and things like that so I think I think I'm happy with that which I'm centered in the video frame there um, Yeah, I think I'm okay. I don't think I want to add anything else to this one. If I did, I'd probably just work my way back over here, maybe do something up here in the top or corner, which I might do. Hmm. Yeah, let me do that. Kind of work my way back up over. Let's see where did I leave off at? Okay, Look over here. Still working on which paint colors uh, um, for the upstairs, for the in the on the walls. Um, I did a little video. I put it on my um, YouTube channel and I was talking about showing the paint chips and kind of saying, you know, I wanted to go live the next day and of course it didn't work out. But um, so you can go look at that little video clip if you want. And I'll try to remember to edit, um, link it below as well in case you want to take a peek see at what my this variegated um, cotton floss because you're seeing the different hues and shades of the different um, tones of red and cranberry and stuff so it looks pretty cool I do like it I do like it a lot okay so let's see I want to kind of go back up here uh, which way do I want to go we'll go here I don't really want to stitch over the little flowers on that fabric I kind of meander all over the place when I'm trying to talk about something okay so yeah I really like how that looks I don't think I want to go um, do another couple stitches or not so yeah I like how that looks I love the green stitching from that um, embroidery thread and then or not I'm sorry upholstery thread and the different var color variegations in the in that cotton floss so yeah I think I like that so I'm going to go ahead and finish this off let me zoom out a little bit and then we'll take a peek at the other ones I did and then the one I did um, this one I did on film on film on this video and these were ones that I did before so all right, let me just tie this off here real quick. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of probably rambling, kind of all over the place. And sometimes that's just how my brain is working, functioning. But I've had a lot of fun, um, you know, kind of doing this, kind of talking with you guys as I'm working on this project and, you know, just having like a little bit of a chat. So I really enjoy that. 
and I hope that you like this as well. Let me move these down so you can kind of see them a little better. Give you something better to look at while I'm instead of watching me tie off the back of this little um, fabric um, little swatch here. I guess it, I'm going to call the, I like the name, I like the kind of fabric swatch where, I, you'll see when the, and the video is uploaded what name I decided on, of course. So it's kind of had like different names kind of popping in my head for the last few days and you know, nothing's really wanted to stick yet, so we will see how that, which one I um, end up um, choosing for that, the, um, the title of the video. Jeez Louise, I already talked today. So let me kind of show them up too close again. Was this the right way? <sighs> it doesn't matter what direction, but you, know, you could do it any way you wanted to. So and that's got some more of that embroidery, um, upholstery thread in there with some of the... Um, cheesecloth. It's got some of the gold in there. This one's got a really cool fiber. Actually supposed to go that way. I like that with a little cool green fiber in there. Um, this one is just like a, a series of like some X's and just you know the basic not really seed stitch I don't think it's called because it's a little bit a little bigger but just some you know general I guess running stitchery and then this one I finished up. Um, I love that one as well. And then here's the one we just did today on, on camera. So I'm really excited about it. And these are going to be great little embellishment pieces to use in several types of projects that I'm going to be um, creating. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I feel like I've completely talked your guys' ear off <laughs> with the whole video together. Jean, happy scrapping, happy planning, happy crafting, and happy slow stitching. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye!